you did one of the most controversial somehow, not to me, most controversial interviews in the last, I don't know how long, when you went to Russia and did Putin. How did it feel coming back? Because like anybody who watched the interview was like, number one, it was fucking awesome. Number two, Putin came off as an interesting, thoughtful, smart individual. And if you've read 1984, you know the base game plan of government control is you have to have an enemy and you have to slander that enemy regardless if you know anything about him. And I think a lot of people are like, oh, Putin apologists are like, you know, uh, you know, whitewashing all the stuff that he's done to the different people. And I was just like, no, I'd, I'd love to see Joe Biden give an interview where he can speak on the history of uh, the United States in the same way that Putin talked about the history of, uh, of his country. I'd love to see Biden do an interview where he shows how to operate a microwave, and I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. And by the way, that. Biden won't do interviews, and neither will Zelensky so far. Um, but what was it like to get to come back? And well, you were you were like in a couple of the places after that. Yeah, I went to the Middle East after that for a while. I mean, I was out of the country for almost a month, so I missed. And I don't ever read about myself anyway because I know who I am. I don't need someone to tell me. So um, I I missed all of that as I always do. But the idea that someone would criticize an interview where you just let the guy talk for a couple hours, I mean, I just think that's inherently useful. I mean, I just wanted to do it as a documentary record of what Putin is like, or at least what he's like in this context, and people can decide for themselves. I'm a big believer in letting people decide for themselves. I think adult men have the right to come to their own conclusions about things. Adults have the right to. So um, I'll never stop believing that because we're not slaves. We can have any opinion we want. And if you don't like it, then try and change it through reason. And if you can't, then fuck you. And I really feel that way. So that's that's the kind of perspective I had going in to talk to Putin. My perceptions of him are exactly what you just said. I thought he was an interesting guy, smart guy, um, impressive guy, you know, in some ways, obviously a lot more impressive than Joe Biden, but he's Russian and he runs Russia and I'm American and I live in America. So I care about my country. I want my leaders to be better. I'm not on Putin's side. I don't have any emotional attachment to any foreign country because I'm not a foreigner. I'm an American, and this is the only country I care about. But um, but for the record, yeah, I thought you know, people can watch it and assess for themselves. And they should. It's it's a fascinating thing. But the interview. idea that you shouldn't be allowed to do that is so crazy to me. I'm just not going to submit to that. being canceled period. by the people who have like just bowed down and given interviews from their knees to the Z Zelensky's of the world. Gargling as they interview, yes. It's wild. As this <laughs> guy comes wild. over in fucking uh, an outfit you'd wear to the, you know, to the store on a Sunday morning to ask the Congress for another $100 billion is fucking wild. Well, he looks like he's going to be in the, you know, Village People music video. I mean, it's like insane. The whole thing is like, insane. you do sort of wonder like that and a million other things going on right now. You wonder if they're, they're sort of seeing how far they can push the population until someone starts laughing. Like, are you joking? It's, it feels like that sometimes. Like, <laughs> what can we, what if we did this? Is anybody going to give a shit? No? Okay. Well, okay. Now let's try this one here. We're going to put Joe Biden up and do this. Wait, what? This guy who can't even uh, walk over here? Shit pants every now and then? <laughs> then we're going to pick the single dumbest but most self-confident person in the entire nation of 350 million people and make her White House press secretary. And so you have to deal with this every day on your television. No, I know. It's, well, I'm going to laugh. But that's not, but, but the, the, the real question I had for you in, in relation to, to freedom of speech <laughs> and free speech is two, two, I believe, champions of free speech who are now uh, in exile, um, Julian Assange and Ed Snowden. I know them both. And you've had conversations with them, um, both people who expose corruption. And, yes. Uh, there was attempted murders on both of them. Yes. Um, both are alive. Julian is kind of rotting in a cell right now, I believe. And, yes. And Ed is in his own exile in Russia. Yes. But thriving, it seems like. Yes. Um, but both people who um, I have a lot of affection for, just the fact that they would do what they did and uh, expose what they exposed and knew the consequences. Um, what, what do you, how do you feel about, about those two? And, and do you think there's any path back, whether it's uh, Trump or Bobby, maybe not even Trump, because I feel like Trump didn't do it, but if Bobby were to get elected, the opportunity to, to pardon those people, would they come back to the States, you think? Would they? Well, I mean, in the case of uh, Snowden, who's stuck, who I like a lot, 
And um, and as with him and Assange, I don't agree with them on everything. I don't agree with my kids on everything. I don't have to yeah. agree. We agree on the things. That, I don't either. I just. I, and by I the love, way, I, yeah. if I'm being totally honest, I probably do agree with them on, on most things. Yeah. But but whatever. I'm sure we'd find every area. I just love that they expose corruption and that they their their bravery, their physical yeah. courage. Those guys, their willingness to suffer for what they believe. And the principles for which they're suffering, you know, the dignity of the individual. We're all created by God. You cannot treat me like a slave. You cannot tell me what to think. You cannot tell me what to say. You cannot lie to my face, period, because I have self-respect. And that there is a field of value. This is right. This is wrong. That's exactly right. What was right. going on was wrong, and we got to expose this. Well, and Snowden especially. I mean, Snowden, you know, Assange is Australian. He's lived around the world. Um, he was a journalist. I don't think he had any expectation that he would wind up spending his adult life in prison. I don't think that even crossed his mind. Maybe it did. I haven't asked him. Uh, but Ed Snowden knew exactly what he was getting into. Yeah. And he was, you know, middle-class American, high IQ guy, lots of job opportunities here. He could have lived a very comfortable life with his wife and kids. And he intentionally put all of that at risk in order to tell Americans what their government was actually doing. And what's crazy to me is not that the U.S. government is trying to murder him, which of course they are, but that news organizations don't defend him. That's when you realize the new, quote, news business is totally fraudulent. None of these people mean it. They went into it. These are people who went into the news business as a way to exercise and exert power over their fellow Americans. Like it's nothing to do with informing people. Um, it has to do with controlling and oppressing them. That's why you work at NBC News. So you can control people. It's really sick. And my my loathing for them just can't even be described in words because it's so profound. I have not forgiven them, and I don't think I will. But Snowden, yeah, Snowden would come back tomorrow. He's American. His yeah. wife's American. I think he's got a fine life in Russia, but he's not Russian. And ultimately, I mean, I don't know if you've lived abroad. Um, you probably haven't had time. But if you spend enough time in foreign countries, you realize that no matter how wonderful they are, they're not your country. You know what I mean? You'll never yeah. fully be a citizen of another country if you were born here. So he wants to come back and they won't let him. And it's disgusting. And it's disgusting that they would use a term like traitor for him when he's literally exposing government corruption and crimes. stuff that you should give a shit about. If if I catch you robbing a liquor store and call the police, am I the criminal? No, you're the criminal. You're robbing a liquor store. Ed Snowden exposed crimes by the U.S. government against the American population. U.S. citizens were paying for this, were being spied on illegally, and he's the criminal? No, no, no. He's the hero. You are the criminal. Mike Pompeo, director of the CIA, who is literally a criminal. Yeah. And yet he's treated like, I mean, he's in the running to be defense secretary if Donald Trump wins. It's shocking. Take a criminal and give him nuclear weapons? Really? But that's been the whole revolving door with uh, government, with the um, uh, cabinet that yes. happens, revolving door from the FDA to the, the CDC to the WHO. It's just a, it's a secret handshake society of everybody just patting each other's back and, and staying in it. And that's the corruption that needs to be exposed. And it's, it's, it's out there. It's utter. And, and they're just doing it so overtly. Who gives a shit? Well, in very high stakes too. It's not. It's not just like, well, I'm not doing the best possible job as transportation secretary. It's like, no, actually, I'm forcing the the entire country to take poison. I'm killing people. I'm destroying the U.S. economy for the benefit of a few, et cetera, et cetera. These are like these are big things. These yeah. are not minor minor fuck ups. These are like these are major felonies, in my opinion.